Hello crafting adventurers! Welcome back to the channel. I just wanted to give a quick overview of what I'm going to be showing you today. I'm going to be making these little tiny books um, because I love books and I'm making them from um, old books that I've gotten from secondhand stores or garage sales. Not too many garage sales lately, but just ones that I have in my collection from previous years. And um, these are really fun little journals. You could pack a few of them, um, tie a ribbon around them, and send them to a friend. Perfect little gifts. Um, ones that you use that might have a fun face on it put a speech bubble on there have some fun with it uh send it to a friend cheer them up i i just did completely blank pages on mine so they could be filled with whatever drawings words that kind of thing the other thing that you can do with them is when you create a book and this is a book from a box if you can believe it this was a cookie box um you can add them to your um book if you had a little tiny page that you created a pocket out of and I'm going to be demonstrating on how to do that in another video but you could take one of these little books and journal in this book to talk about perhaps pictures that are going to be on this page memories of a trip that kind of thing and tuck that into your journal um so anyway I just wanted to share that before I go into the how to's and um I ho really hope you enjoy this project and start going to your second hand stores or look at your bookshelf and see what you have on hand that you can use to create with. If you have any questions, just let me know below in the comments. So let's get started. Uh, this is a really easy project and lots of versatility with it. You're really just going to need scissors, some old books, some eight and a half by 11 paper for the most part, maybe some pattern paper if you wanted to include pattern paper instead of just um, plain paper. You could use line paper. Um, that's my example of the pattern paper. And then I just use some nice um, plain paper on the inside. And the cover is made out of an uh, image that I grabbed from an old book. So again, lots of fun. A variety of different things you can do here. You can use books or magazines. I grabbed a bunch of books and I really encourage everyone just to really connect with what you're interested in because you will make a book that you absolutely love or love to give away. Um, there's so many different options um, that I'm flipping through in this book. I'm kind of stuck on that fisherman and I took my ruler just to measure how wide it would be because I always want to make sure uh, for these little books that the eight and a half by 11 uh, inch paper would work because otherwise I'm going to a bigger size and that's often not as easy to get. A lot of books it's just really easy to rip out the pages. Some you'll see that I have to use a craft knife to get the pages out. These types of books are really nice because of the variety of different pages pictures in it. And the other thing about it is it has nice black and white pictures and some colored pictures. So I grabbed this one of this smiling little girl. It's a, such a cute little picture. And the other thing with books is don't be afraid to use the words in the book. Books like that have a lot of words. Um, you can use just elements of the words. You could use elements of the paper if you wanted to, of, of the pictures, if you wanted to cut out a certain image in one of the pictures and glue it onto a book cover that you're already working on or tuck it into a journal that you're working on. So never throw out a book even if you think that you've expended all of the pages in it. There'll always be something. So this is a little children's book and I just really love the images in this book. I uh, the story was a little odd, but anyway, I got it from the local library at um, secondhand store. And um, children's books are really nice to use because they're often very colorful and have some really different images. This is the image I decided to use um, with the leaves on it. And I needed to use a craft knife because it was too hard to rip these pages out. Um, sometimes you have to go to one page or the other just just try each side. And looking at this now, it's kind of funny. I never realized that the leaf turned into a person. So this is the first time I'm seeing that, realizing 
the leaf transformed into a little man. And anyway, I thought it was just a leaf. Here's another one. Uh, again, I'm kind of on the animal kick here, or nature kick, really. Uh, this is just a book on, I guess, marvels and mysteries of the animal world. And I'm really liking that front picture with all the different animal or insect types. So we'll just take that. And don't feel that what you rip out you actually have to use in this project. So go ahead and rip a bunch of pages out and then decide later. Go through them all and think about who you might be making the book for or what you might be making the book for and make a decision that way. <clears throat> Secondhand stores often have a lot of books on um, flowers, gardening, that kind of thing, nature books, big coffee table books. People seem to be giving away their books which is great for craft purposes. I often buy the books and then realize they're way too nice to cut up and just keep them on my own coffee table. And that's okay too. Um, I love recycling books and some of the stories and the words in the books have are really nice to read because um, they're written at a time that, you know, there was no internet, no YouTube, no Twitter or Facebook. And sometimes those stories seem so genuine when they were written compared to what we're dealing with today. So I, I really enjoy those. This is a more of a encyclopedia. I think it was like in the decade of, I forget what decade, maybe, I don't even want to guess, um, before I was born. But uh, lots of good images. It kind of goes through everything. Um, food, politics, um, you know, world events. Um, it's really centered on the, um, the United States, though, I would say. But there are still a lot of pictures in here and a lot of really interesting um, facts and fun reads as I was going through it. It's hard not to read some of the captions as you're flipping through the pages and realize that there's a lot of horrible things in the past and we can learn from those things. This picture here is uh, one that I decided to use of the little girl sitting in the chair and then I felt really guilty that I separated that picture from the mom and the other little kids in the picture but anyway those are the pictures that I chose and what we have to do next is we're going to cut them down to the size that we want to use so we really just need to take a ruler and decide what size we want our little pamphlet books to be I'm measuring the one I did beforehand just to kind of get an idea of how big it was Again, always keep in mind if you want to use the most readily available paper, what your paper size is that you're going to fill. I would say for the most part, if you're in North America, you're going to be using an eight and a half by 11 inch piece of paper. Uh, I believe in the, in the UK, it's called an A4. It's slightly bigger. So always just keep that in mind because when you fold that in half, um, depending on what way you fold it in half, but typically you'd fold it in half the long way and your book would not be any more than um, five and a half inches wide and eight, eight and a half inches tall. But oftentimes you can't get books that pictures from a book that are that big. So you're going to be cutting these down and more than likely cutting down your eight and a half by 11 inch piece of paper. So this is a book that I'm going to be folding in half. So I want to make sure that the, my height isn't any taller than eight and a half um, inches. That's as high as I can go that way. Um, so I'm just cutting this and really look at the image and see what you want to keep and what you don't want to keep. You always want to make sure that the front of your book is really the center uh, focus of your whole little masterpiece that you're creating. And as you're going through and creating these, really think about um, what you could also add to the covers. Like you could add stickers, you could add, like I said, speech bubbles, um, you could add words. So if you had another word that you cut out or a series of words that you cut out from maybe from this, the books that you're using, maybe from a magazine, you could decorate the front with that as well. There's just a lot of options and it's a really fun, easy get your hands into some paper kind of crafting. This is a nice bird image, diff slightly different size because of the picture was just a different size. Each one is going to be slightly different. You could make them all the same size and then your pictures are on the front are just going to vary 
might not be exactly what you wanted to capture. Again, I'm really um, using my paper cutter a lot just for the straight edge and convenience of cutting um, straight lines and measuring. And this is the paper cutter that I've talked about many times. After I did this video, my blade was completely dull, so I will have to order a new blade. But that's okay because I like the idea of just ordering a new blade and not having to replace a complete paper cutter, which is one of the reasons why I like this paper cutter is because it does have replaceable blades. So looking at this, I'm just trying to figure out what insects I really like. I like the, uh, the brighter yellow ones uh, to keep on the front of the book. Again, go with the theme that you like. If you're not into nature or birds or um, any of the images I'm using here, really find a book that connects and speaks to you. You will enjoy your time making that book so much more if you can relate to the images on the page. It might just be a book on art. There's so many books, uh, coffee table books on great art masterpieces. That would be another great one because you'd have so many different colors and different things on the front cover um, to, uh, yeah, just to make your book different. Children's books, again, are really good. Um, the older the children's books um, are can be really nice too, like those the Golden Books, if you remember the Golden Books uh, series. They have a lot of really nice designs. Um, lots of Disney books, if you're interested in anything Disney-themed, or if you're doing something for your kids or your grandkids. Again, this is just a really fun book. Um, and it can be used for anything. Tuck it in your purse, send it to a friend, fill it with doodles, give it to your kids with a pack of crayons and have them create some images. So I'm going through this and don't be afraid to trim once you fold your book in half and realize you want to do a different size. So that's what I was doing there. Here's another great image of a beautiful seascape shot with the uh, with the cliff and the uh, with the cove there and the thing I like about old books as well is that the pictures haven't been played with like no one's photoshopped that picture it's just a picture and it's beautiful and I love the idea that no one has played around with it like that's probably what it looked like at the time that they took the picture the water wasn't any more blue and the sky wasn't any more blue it just that's what it was. So I could be using my bone folder, probably should be using my bone folder to make a really nice crease, but I didn't. And I'm just using my finger. This image really cracked me up. I just, I don't know, it takes me back. Um, it looks like a picture that would be taken at uh, my own kitchen table as I was uh, growing up. And um, there's just so much going on. There's a home-cooked meal. There's some crazy hair on that kid. And what's going through her head? No idea. I didn't read the article or the, the piece that went along with it. Um, but I'm going to make up my own thoughts in my own head about that. So I just trimmed a little bit to make her face more of the center point. I love the color of pink. Um, and obviously classic to have a glass of milk with your dinner as a kid like that. That's a perfect one to use for it with a speech bubble and, and send it to a, a friend just to lighten their day. This one I really liked as well. I really like old black and white photos. Um, I honestly love this idea of simpler days, the idea of just fishing, um, the idea of kids just being out in nature. Really, um, really excites me. I love it. And I wish more people were doing that kind of thing these days. Anyway, this is a boy standing in a canoe fishing, and I just thought, nice image for a maybe a little travel journal or something like that. So really the next step is to um, get the insides of your paper. I pre-cut all of my paper uh, before, um, I, I mean not before, but after I did this and I didn't show cutting the, my insides. So I, all my insides are there. I'm just doing a simple pamphlet stitch. I'm attaching the clip to the pages so they don't move. And I'm just doing three hole, three hole pamphlet stitch, super easy, one in, about in the middle, one around the top and one at the bottom. 
you can make them exact if you want, if you want to measure. Otherwise, just free form it. I'm using a book binding awl, which I highly recommend, but you could use um, anything pointy to make that point. I like using a curved needle, like I've said before. Pamphlet stitch in through the middle of the book, out through the back, and then pick a hole I want up to the top, pull it through, and I go down to the bottom hole, pull it through, and then back out, and then from the outside to the in to create the final stitch. Make sure you have a string on each side of the uh, vertical line in the middle, a vertical string in the middle, and then tie a double knot. Easy as that, and the little book is done. So again, you can embellish this any way you want. Um, and complete, one book done. I'm just gonna speed up the rest because I'm doing the exact same thing on all of these books. I'm just quickly punching three holes, taking my um, wax linen thread and doing a simple three hole pamphlet stitch. Again, I really can't emphasize enough to make sure that you have a piece of string on each side of your vertical string just to tighten the, um, the knot down and keep your string very secure. I've lost my needle there and I found it and here we go. I, I'm kind of using an off-white color for the most part for all of my inside pages, but you could use any anything. Line paper would work here as well because line paper is roughly 8.5 by 11. Um, scrapbooking paper, you could use pages from the book that you are ripping out easily. You could add a, a, a page of all writing in there just to make it a little bit different. Anything that you find that you can basically fold in half, you could use in these little books. As you can see, uh, I know this is fast, but this is an easy project. You could get a lot of these done um, in one sitting. It would be very good to do for, um, let's say you were having a um, a party, not that we're having a lot of parties right now, but a birthday party or some sort of social get together. Um, and these would be really nice takeaways at the end of the evening or end of the afternoon to have in a nice basket and everyone can pick a book and take it home. Um, these would be nice to do as a crafting project if you wanted to get some friends together and have a crafternoon, have them bring old books and magazines, don't tell them what they're doing, and just start creating a whole bunch of books. They'll love it. Bookbinding is the best. So here are all the books. I found my bone folder. I'm using it as I should have before just to make a really nice crease in all of my books. This is also a really economical project because the books that I was purchasing were maximum $2.50 each and it's a really great way of reusing books that are basically discarded. There are the books. I hope you enjoyed that. Please subscribe. See you next time.